All right, all right. Good to be back. You understand me? Blackboard behind me. You understand? You understand me? Trey, what's up, man? Welcome to class. This ain't church. Hey, mama. Hey. You thought this was church? This ain't church. This class. You understand me? Welcome to Study with Grace, a Bible study of biblical truth. Y'all know who named this 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 whole thing? Did I tell y'all who named this? Okay. I thought I didn't. I didn't say nothing. Let me let a few people get on, and then also let me let everybody know I'm live. Let me go. I'm live. That little one little message in that boy out. All right. How y'all liking the class so far? How y'all liking class? I like it. You like it? Yeah. Have anyone, have y'all went back and maybe looked at some of the series? Because now y'all know my favorite one so far? It's a bloody gospel. <laughs> it's a bloody gospel. It's one of my favorite ones. You understand me? I watched that. I tried to I tried to watch a few studies on the way back from California, and I watched I watched you know we watched a few, you know a few, but I'm excited because we're talking about salvation and you know getting the truth about salvation. Victoria, hola, what's going on? What's going on? Welcome to class. You know this is not church. Don't you come in here thinking it's church? It's a Bible study. A biblical truth up in here where we teach we have curriculums you understand me class <laughs> you understand so look we've been going over salvation we don't we talked about the truth in salvation we talked about the shuns in salvation we talked about um um why people add these things to salvation. We talked about salvation in its entirety, right? We talked about, did we talk, did we go with faith? Yeah, we talked, we went over faith and salvation. We went over the blood in salvation. It's on the right that we talk about grace in salvation. So we're gonna dive this right on in. And no sister playing around. What y'all know about grace? Cause I know, I know we um we really don't really too much know about grace. None to deserve it. It's a gift. Favor. What about you teenagers? Y'all know about grace. Cause y'all experience it all the time, especially you, Trey. Y'all know about grace. Because you can't talk salvation if you ain't got grace in there. So this series is called Grace in Its Entirety and How It Plays the Role in Salvation. See, we all are accustomed to grace being for salvation. I'm going to tell you, it's, it's, you know, it's more than that. <laughs> Trey. It's class. This ain't no sermon. What you know about grace? <laughs> huh? I don't know. You have no idea what grace is? Help your uncle out. Vontae, what's grace? Y'all the ones in the schools. You from the military? School? Y'all, what? Y'all need to figure this out. Y'all don't know what grace is. Showing mercy. Showing, mercy, showing love. That's a pretty good answer. Devin, you the son of the teacher. You got to know something up in him. <laughs> What's grace? 
Your dad ain't teach you that? No. He, he ain't teach you that. <laughs> he gonna teach you today, though. So look, we're gonna go right into grace in its entirety. What does entirety mean? Huh? What do you say, Fonte? Big? All right, entire to mean everything. The entire pot. The entire bowl. All right? So we're going to learn that. We want to know what grace is in its entirety, in full. We want to know what grace is in full. And then after we learn what it is, we got to figure out how it plays a role in your salvation. That's what we're going to do. You got to remember and understand that grace is one of the most important doctrine. You hear that, Trey? In the scriptures, in the Bible you read, this word right here, grace, is the, one of the most, actually the most important doctrine. I mean, important. You understand me? Because without, without grace, we don't. We doomed. So if you don't understand, goodwill. Torah say goodwill. If you don't understand this, grace, then you're going to be lost. So we're going to learn what grace is in full, not just when it comes to salvation. This word grace is misunderstood, is misinterpreted, and it is abused. Who got questions? Trade is not a sermon. This class. <laughs> huh? Can you say you had a lot of questions? Now's your, now's your chance to. Torah, that's right, a whole. So let's talk about the grace of God. All right? What do y'all think the grace of God is? The DBR? Sure, I... You be jumping the gun. <laughs> we got to talk about grace. If we don't get this grace down, it's over with. What up, Brookster? Welcome to Study with Grace. A Bible study of biblical truth. And you know what? This is class. This is not church. Washing away or sins. Him dying for us. Okay. Victoria on fire. Victoria, she said, Victoria, she texts the group. She said, hey, man, we're having a Bible study on Wednesday. <laughs> Victoria, that's how you show that hunger. We be over your house Sunday. Your daddy making us come, so we're going we to beat our Sunday. So look, we got to talk about grace. The grace of God, the dairy put it, just said it. His death, burial, and resurrection. You understand me? What else about the grace of God? Because this, this is a part of it. This is a part of it. Yeah, it says the gift. Grace of God, the dead, burial, and resurrection, which is, that's his gift, right? What else? It's one more thing without Googling that the grace of God penetrates today without Googling it. Y'all got y'all notes? Y'all got y'all notes? That's what we're going to go over today. If you ain't got notes to write this down, you ain't, this ain't nothing you're going to be able to learn. You're not going to remember none of this four days from now. You got to reference your notes. So let's talk about grace. First, the word grace, all right, is found in the Bible a lot of times. A lot. Y'all aware of that? 
the word grace. Hey, what's going on, Brittany? Kobe Wallace, welcome to Study with Grace. Share this video so they can get a truth in the grace in its entirety and how it plays the role in salvation. This is class. This is not church. This is not a sermon. I'm not a preacher. I'm a Bibulist. You understand me? I know you ain't never heard of a Bibulist. You ain't never seen one. But that's what I am. Grace is huge. Huge. And the word grace is found in the Bible a lot of times. How many times do you think it's found in the Bible? Just, just 70. In the King James Bible, the word grace is found, watch this, in the King James Bible, the word grace is found 170 times. Y'all aware of that? Out of 159 verses. Were y'all aware of that? The word grace is found in the King James Bible 170 times out of 159 verses. I use a uh, program called E as an elephant sword. E sword. You can download it on your phone. That's why I get a lot of my, you know, numbers and things like that to try to figure out how many, um, so I can figure out how many times a certain word was used in the Bible. Because when you do it that way, you get to see how God used the word for each dispensation. Uh-oh, there it is. Let me, let me just say this. Let me, let me just put a pause right here for a second. Study with grace. Read the Bible dispensationally. There's a little word called dispensationalism. All right. Dispensationalism is where you take the scriptures and you rightly divide the word of truth. Unashamed. Dispensationally. Who was God talking to? What group of people was he talking to? How did God move? Right. So. When you read the scriptures dispensationally, you have to because God wrote the Bible dispensationally. Why? Why did God write the Bible dispens dispens um, dispensationally? It's because he is what? Omnipresent. So when God speak, he don't just speak. God speak one time and he talked to every age. It's on us to go back and rightly divide what he's saying. Pick out the parts for us. It was not for us. If you don't read the Bible the way God wrote it, which is dispensationally, you will find a huge and a bunch of contradictions in the Bible. Jesus Christ himself read the Bible dispensationally. Are y'all aware of that? <laughs> Are y'all aware of that? Jesus Christ, the King, our Savior, the son of man. Read the Bible dispensationally and I'll prove it to you. You see, we're accustomed to thinking, rightly dividing the word of God, right? Meaning we're taking verses and chapters, right? We're taking verses and chapters and put it in the correct era. But we, we, didn't, do it, we didn't do it the right way. We got to take every word not verses and chapter, every word. 2 Timothy 2 and 15 say, rightly divide the word of truth, not the chapter of truth. Welcome to my revelation. Yeah. We've been rightly dividing by verses and chapters 
We're not rallying the rally dividing the word. Do, do y'all know that one verse, one verse God spoke. Well, he spoke a lot of verses, but one verse he spoke. Half of the verse go to the Jews and half of the verse go to the Gentiles in one verse. And I'm going to show you to your scripture. Jesus Christ himself, real quick. Viewers, if you're not reading your Bible dispensationally the way God spoke it, you're going to be lost. <laughs> you're going to be lost. So in scripture, watch this. Y'all going to like this. Just, just real quick, and I'm going to get back to, back to the grace. If you go into your Bible, we're going to go into, uh, what was that? Um, let me see. We're going to go into, uh-uh. Everybody, turn your Bibles to chapter, I mean to Luke, to the book of Luke. I'm going to show you how, just real quick, on how and why you got to read your Bible dispensationally. God is omni, omnipresent. What's another one? Omnipotent. What's another one? <laughs> Viewers, omni what? What's the omnis on them? God, when he speak, let there be light. He talking to every dispensation. He told us to go and rightly divide what he's saying. That's what we don't do. Some do, some go chapters, some do verses, but the scriptures say every word. And I'm going to prove it to you. Jesus Christ himself, read the Bible dispensationally in one verse. Not, you know, three chapters. No, a verse where he... Up okay, let me relax. <laughs> All right, Luke chapter 4. All right. We're going to go to number... and I I'll read it. We're going to go to number... Um, number 16 through 20. Watch this. Luke chapter 4, 16 through 20. He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. As usual, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him, and unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written. Right? So it means Jesus Christ is reading what book? The book of Isaiah. So whatever Jesus is saying right here, we should better go back to the book of Isaiah and quote the exact same thing. Or oh, this Bible is a lie. So he, he found a place where it was written. It says, 18, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set free the oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fixed on him. Y'all saw what just happened. Basically, Trey, Jesus went to the book of Isaiah. He, he went to this part where I heard he read it. Once he got done read it, it said what? Number 20. He then rolled up the scroll and gave it back and sat down, right? Now, let's go to the book of Isaiah, because that's what he was quoting. I'm going to show you how Jesus Christ himself read the, scripture, read the scriptures dispensationally. Watch this. Go to Isaiah, because that's what he's reading. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. It's getting good. Uh, chapter 61. All right, we're going to read verses 1 through 2, because this is what Jesus was reading. It reads, the spirit of the Lord God is on me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and, free, and freedom to the prisoners, 
to proclaim the year of the, of the Lord's favor and the day of our God's vengeance to comfort all who mourn. Did y'all catch that? Did y'all see him read it dispensationally or no? Y'all need me to point it out? Point it out. Point out. Go back to Luke chapter 4 and 16. Let's look at it. That's why you got to rightly divide this thing. All right. You see Jesus, they, he stood up to read, and I gave him the scroll, and the scroll was the book of Isaiah. And he read the same thing we just read in Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, et cetera, et cetera, right? But notice something. Look at number 19. It says, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This is Jesus. Then it says he closed the book. And some translations say, then he rolled up the scroll and gave it back. Y'all see that? All right, now let's go back to Isaiah. To, he said, to proclaim the year of the Lord, then he closed the book. Right? Let's go back to Isaiah. 61. Verse 1. Now, let's, let's look at number 2. It says, because this was Jesus reading, it said, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. But watch this. And the day of God's vengeance to comfort all who mourn. Why did Jesus didn't read that part? <laughs> he read all everything else. And once he read number two, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, like he, like he read, he closed the book. Why he didn't finish the verse? Go back to Luke. Go back to Luke. Go back to Luke chapter four. Look at number 19. Look at number 19. It, it says, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Right? And then they said, Jesus rolled the scroll up. And then you keep reading number 21. He says, he began, he began by saying to them, today, as you listen, this scripture has been fulfilled. Y'all see that, number 21? How's it? If you go back to the book of Isaiah, Jesus left out a whole... Part of the verse. Y'all see that? What part did he leave out? Why did he leave that out? It ain't happened yet. <laughs> he shut the book because the first part of the, that one verse, he had to write it about it. Absolutely. Notice that the book of Isaiah was written a thousand some years before Jesus was even born. So God spoke that to the prophet Isaiah a thousand some odd years before Jesus was born. God speak, he's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time, anywhere he want to be. He's not bound to time. Absolutely. That means he could be anywhere, whenever, however he want to. He ain't bound to time like we are. See, we got to submit to time. He don't. So when he talk, he not talking to a time frame. He is the I am. He talk and we got to get it together. We got to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He closed the book, y'all. And Jesus said, this, has, this verse has been fulfilled. But if you go back and read Isaiah, Jesus left out the vengeance part. You know why? He ain't happened yet. He ain't, Jesus ain't came back and got his vengeance yet. So that's why he closed the book. You got to read your Bible dispensationally. Jesus Christ himself read the scrolls dispensationally. <laughs> huh? He said, God, he said, God will get his vengeance. He ain't came back as a lion yet. When he come back as that lion, he's going to get that vengeance. And then that part of that one verse going to be fulfilled. <laughs> so you, when you read this Bible, you got to really read this thing. You got to read it dispensationally or you're going to be lost. I can give you some more. Y'all want some more? I can give you some more now. You got to read it dispensationally. All right, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you nothing. 
Go to Hebrew. Hebrew. Hebrews chapter 1. Um, um, go to King James Version. I'm in the wrong version. King James Version. Hebrews chapter 1 and number 5. I'm going to show you how the Bible can take one verse and you got to split it in half of one verse before the period come. The period ain't even came yet, but you got you to write it divided before the period come because that's how God talk. God talked to everybody with one sentence. Now figure your part out on the part he's talking about. That's why scriptures say rightly divided. The word, not the chapter, the word. Hebrews chapter five, Hebrews chapter one, verse five, it reads. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. Y'all see that? When you see the word and again, that lets you know that God has said this before. Y'all see that? Y'all know I overlooked that. Y'all have probably overlooked it too. Everybody overlooked that. And again, that means I can go back in this Bible and find the spot where God said that particular thing. I will be him to I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. I should go back in the Bible and find it written just like that. Somewhere in here. You know, you know I found it, right? <laughs> so which one, which one have he said to the angels? Then he said, and again, I will be to him a father, right? And he will be to me a son. Watch this. You got to rightly divide the word, Trey. You can't just sit down and listen. <laughs> Go to 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 14. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 14. We got to get this together. You understand me? Watch this. Let me go to it. 2 Samuel, watch this. Chapter 7, verse 14. Remember, we just read Hebrews 1 and 5 because it said, and again. Yes. Samuel was written before what? Hebrews. Hebrews. Yes. Right? So God not lying when he say and again because he said it before. Yes. <laughs> he said it before. So he's not a God of lie. Yes. He had to say and again. And again. Yes. Now go to 2 Samuel. Watch this. You got to rightly divide this, this verse or you're going to be lost. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 14, it reads, um, I will be his father, and he shall be what? My son. My son. Now watch this. The verse not done. It says, if he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Uh-oh, that part ain't God. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus didn't, didn't commit no iniquity. He got treated as if he committed iniquity, but he didn't commit iniquity. <laughs> so you got to rightly divide that piece right there. And if, and if you read the whole chapter, you will see that this is God talking about his son. <laughs> if you read the entire chapter, you'll see that. This is God talking about, you know, saying this is my son. <laughs> but the iniquity part, oh, no, nah, he wasn't talking about his son right there. <laughs> so you got to rightly divide that. This is why God say study, y'all. This is why we got to study. I can give you more scriptures. I can give you more. And again, and again. Rightly divide the word, y'all. That's why I take different apps to help me figure out how many times the word is being said, this particular word. 170 times in, uh, uh, in 159 verses. I want to know, out of, that 170, out of that 170 times, 
where in the Bible does grace fall in at the most? When did God use, where did God use the word grace at the most? Where he used it the least at? Study, 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 study. Study. Study the word, not the chapter and verse, the word. All right? This is interesting though, y'all. The word grace appears in the Old Testament because remember, it appears 170 times. By that 170 times in the Old Testament, how many times y'all think that word appear? Grace in the Old Testament. 17 times. You say 30? Woo, that boy almost got it. Snoop, you was right though. It appeared 39 times In 35 and 37 verses. <laughs> Grace. Why did, if the word appeared, the word grace appeared 170 times in the entire Bible, why God only speak about it 39 times in the Old Testament? Why so much in the New? <laughs> Could be. We're going to see. <laughs> oh, man. Now watch this part right here. Remember, I'm going off the King James Bible. Watch this. Watch this. In the New Testament, grace shows up 131. Well, how you know that? <laughs> and but how many verses though? <laughs> 139 times out of 122 verses. Look how much more grace God used the word grace in his in his talking. He talked about grace way more in the New Testament. Than he did in the Old Testament. And remember, we open this thing up. We want to know what grace is in its entirety. And then I say, and how it plays a role in salvation. We're going to open this thing up. Now watch this. In the New Testament, y'all really going to trip out right here. In the New Testament, watch this. Y'all going to trip out on this part. The word grace in the New Testament, watch this, it appeared only five times in the four gospel books. Matthew. Mark, Luke, and John. Grace only appeared five times in the gospel books. Y'all know those books. Y'all know. Them the ones we run to. Trying to get our doctrine for grace. And grace, this is the age we're in. And grace only appeared five times in the gospel books. Matthew, Mark, Matthew, Mark Luke, and John. Five times. <laughs> five times out of 131 times in the New Testament, only five times in all these books combined. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You got that, Bunte? <laughs> Peter got some stuff in there. Peter got some stuff in there. So, watch this. It appeared once. It appeared once in the book of Luke and four times in the book of John. Matthew and Mark are sitting on a big goose egg. <laughs> Ain't that something? I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach you guys grace. 
You, but you got to see it the way God said it. You got to see where God used the word grace at. So you can understand in its entirety what grace really is. That's why a bunch of like to go in and see how many times the word is used. You know, how many times in the Old Testament, how many times in the New Testament. I want to see how God is talking. Now watch this. Can I go a little further? So one time, grace is used one time in the book of Luke, four times in the book of John. Now watch this. Keep this in mind. The book of Luke is the longest book in the New Testament. And the 12th longest book of the entire Bible with a word count of 19,482 words. So the book of Luke contains 19,482 Greek words. And all them words, grace is used once. <laughs> and the book of Luke is the longest word count Bible in the entire New Testament. Ain't that something? I wonder why. I wonder why grace in the gospel books was only used a total of five times. Hmm. You know I can't leave old faith out, old controversy. Y'all know, know what book that is. Oh, controversy. X. <laughs> you know, I couldn't leave that out. The word grace in the book of X appeared 10 times. And y'all know that what majority of them 10 times come from, right? <laughs> 10 times. And watch this. The book of X contains a word count of 18,450. Keep in mind that the book of Acts is the second longest book in the New Testament. The second longest book in the New Testament. Read me. And it's the 15th longest book in the entire Bible. Who got questions? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help us see what does salvation mean? You can, ask, you can ask anybody in here. They'll tell you what salvation is. I ain't got to be the one to say that. Trey, uh, Trey said he want to know what is salvation. What does that mean? Now watch this. I'm, I'm kind of running through the New Testament books since that's where the... If you go Romans through, Hebrew, Romans through Hebrew, you know, you know, Romans through Hebrews is, you know, pretty much the Apostle Paul epistles and writings, right? The word grace appears, how many times y'all think? Huh? <laughs> it actually appeared and mentioned it 99 times. 99. I thought it was going to be more myself. 99 times. Watch this. The book of James through Jude, the word grace appears. What y'all think? That was a good one. No, you got almost on it. 15 times. And, you know, James to Jude, you know, they keep, uh, that's including Peter, right? And so Peter and his books, out of, out of all that 15, 10 of them come for Peter. Ten come for Peter, and finally, the Book of Revelations. I think that's a run to book too. And guess what? The word grace appears. How many times y'all think? Little two. 
And this book got a word count of 9,851. Two times. So as we can clearly see, God really, really showed us just in where he placed the word grace for the grace age where our doctrine truly lies, just on the word count. Forget the theology. Just look at how God spoke it and see where how many times it, 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 you know, it lays into what dispensation. <laughs> oh, man, this is good. So the word grace is found in the Bible, and it is the doctrine. Okay? There is a doctrine of grace. No one can say there's, there's not a doctrine of grace. Go ahead and try again, Veronica. I mean, no one can say that there's no, 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 um, no writings about grace in the Bible. They can't say that. We just proved that today. You can get download E sword, do the exact same thing I did. I just put in the word grace and I hit search and let me know how many times it's in the Bible and how many verses. That's all I did. So let's get to work. We got the, prelim the preliminary out the way, right? We got to figure out what grace, it, what grace in its entirety and how it plays a role in salvation because it was mentioned in 39, 39 times in the Old Testament. Was salvation in the Old Testament? Was salvation in the Old Testament? Did you unput it on here? Let's get to work. He only, huh? Salvation didn't come to win. He what? Absolutely. How are we confused about that? <laughs> salvation is provided to us, Trey, by God, grace by his gift of his son Jesus when he died on the cross. He was buried and he rose again on the third day. And if you believe and trust in that, you are saved. That's salvation. So, what I want to do is look at grace, not just in our era, because you know this is our era. We only know grace for salvation, but God uses more than just salvation. Oh yeah, absolutely. And we are in we are we are in grace in every way he uses it. So you gotta see how God speak. You gotta rightly divide his word, like I gave you two examples on how Jesus did. Right? If you don't understand how he speak, you don't, if you don't understand that he's omni, <laughs> it ain't gonna work out. What is the definition of grace biblically? How do you define grace biblically? Say, this, this kind of teaches make you, man, let me go check my Bible out. <laughs> this stuff with grace. Y'all like my shirt? You understand me? <laughs> How do you define grace biblically? What is the definition of grace biblically? The Derek already answered it. Well, some of it. <laughs> Let me say this. The word grace in the New Testament comes from the Greek, the Greek word chars. Chars. Grace in the Greek word uh, me, uh, is translated as Char, C H A R I S. Char, just a Greek word. This is the word the Holy Spirit gave when he mentioned the word grace. Chars. Which means, watch this. This word means, grace means favor. You understand me? Blessings. You understand me? And or kindness. Y'all with me? 
That's what the Greek word means. So when you see grace in the New Testament, he said charge, and it means favor, blessing, or kindness. So don't look at it no more as salvation, even though that is, you know, look at it the way God gave it to us, favor, blessings, and kindness. We're going to see how grace plays that role into salvation. Right? See, we all can extend grace to each other. But when you connect the word grace with God, then it takes on a more powerful meaning. All right? I can't give the same grace as God can give. You feel me? You understand me? All right, bro, get back on the Wi-Fi. So let's jump into the scriptures and get this thing done. I'm happy to be back in Sabona land. Because I got somebody who can read better than me. I ain't going to lie to you. I stutter and everything. Let's go to John chapter 1. Verses 14 through 17. Let's see what God got to say about grace. And we're going to read the King James Version. For he was before me, and of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came by who? Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, I got to go to the scriptures. That's what biblists do. We can't talk the talk. We can't come with our own theories and theology. We have to go to the book. We got to rightly divide it dispensationally. <laughs> they don't like that dispensation. I remember the he asked, he said, man, why, why people don't, all these many years, why people, the reason why is because my friend, my brother, they don't dispensate. Straight up. Dispensation means I'm, I'm talking to this particular people. This is for them. This is not for you. So I say, Trey, back you in the flow. Right? I didn't tell Bonte to back you in the flow. I told Trey to back you in the flow. Right? But Trey, but Bonte started back you in the flow. Why are he doing that? He wasn't told to back you. You were told to back you. So what they do today is they take things in the Bible that God wasn't talking to them about right and they take those things that God was talking to, talking to somebody else about and apply it to them today and that's where they get all the controversy from <laughs> now watch this let me say this while, while I'm talking to Trey because Trey said something earlier I asked him what grace was he said something about mercy y'all remember that grace is different from mercy and mercy plays the same role in salvation. Who knows the, diff the difference between grace and mercy? Mercy, you, you messed up. You know what I'm saying? You messed up in that regard, and, and God ended up blessing you and being shown grace. For as grace, you can't do nothing for it. You know what I'm saying? It's just a gift you give it. But mercy, you know, you, you, you ask and beg and plead for that because you know. <laughs> That was actually a great answer. I wanted to go back and forth a little bit. I couldn't do it. <laughs> Mercy plays the same role in salvation as grace. Do y'all agree with that or no? Have you ever heard somebody say that? God said it. And I'm going to show it to you. So you can get a true understanding. All right? Let's go to the book of Titus. Y'all know what it is. King James Version. The last verse, Brittany, was John chapter 1, verse 14 through 17. And I said, grace is different from mercy, and Ladera pretty much gave the answer. Then I also stated that mercy plays the same role in salvation. Then I asked, have y'all heard of that? I said, no. Let's open our Bibles. To the book of Titus. Who wrote that? Who wrote that book? Uh, Trey, $50 cash out, no help. Who wrote the book of Titus? <laughs> Trey, 
the apostle Paul wrote the book of Titus. You get familiar with his name. That's your apostle. That's where our doctrine come from. Romans through Philemon. That's the, those are the books in the Bible. That don't mean you. Let me say this real quick. Paul is not my savior. Let me just say this real quick. Paul ain't nothing. He a sinful man just like me. I represent the king, Jesus Christ, the son of man. Huh? The one who embraced the cross like he was hugging his wife and shed his blood. Not Paul. <laughs> I just listened to what Jesus said through Paul. Not Paul himself. I'm not, I'm not the one going to tell you that. Only, only read Romans through Hebrews. No. That's crazy. You better read Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 all the way to Revelation chapter 22 verse 21. I believe in the Bible in its entirety. <laughs> huh? Watch this. Let's go to Titus 3 and 5. King James Version. And let's hear it when you get there. But I got to show you that mercy plays the same role in salvation. Watch this. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. According to his what? Mercy. His mercy. His mercy. He, he did what according to his mercy? He saved us. I don't know. I don't know the way to tell you. <laughs> I, I don't know the way to way. To, he could have easily said grace right there. Why didn't he say grace? He God. <laughs> Give me a coin. Give me a quarter. Okay. <laughs> why didn't why didn't he use the word grace in Titus three and five? Why didn't he say, "But according to his grace, he saved us"? Why he say, "But according to his mercy"? We got to rightly divide, y'all. The word of truth, mama. How you doing today, mama? I'm doing good. You feeling pretty good? Yes, I am. You, you know, you high yellow. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Ooh, my mama look like a little light bulb over there. <laughs> you understand me? <laughs> That's something else there. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Mercy and grace plays the, pretty much plays the same role in salvation. You understand me? I just love how God wrote this thing because you cannot put salvation on anything else but Him. You a liar, and the truth ain't in you. Put, you say it's anything else. It was His mercy. And it was His grace. It was His faith. Did, did y'all like the the faith of Christ? Go go back and watch it if y'all missed it. It's just too. Watch this. Mercy and grace are the extraordinary and the utmost attributes. What? What, Josh? Like <laughs> Mercy and grace is the utmost attributes of love. Okay. Okay. You got extraordinary. Extraordinary. Y'all feel me? See, God is a triune God. Y'all hear me? He's a triune God. One God, three persons. Not three gods. I'm going to show you what it means. Triune, it means three. If I was to say this quarter is three, would y'all believe me? No. Why not? It's one, right? Yeah. I'm ready to tell you it's three. You can't see three in this? No. Where do you see three at? Ten, ten, five. Ten, ten, five. Y'all ready for this? This quarter is a triune attribute. On one side, you got heads. 
We're going to call that side mercy. Okay. On the back side, we got tails. We're going to call that grace. Okay. But the coin itself, we're going to call that love. We're going to call that love. I hope y'all like that because I really did some work on that. <laughs> <laughs> mercy and grace are two sides of a coin, and the coin is love. Did y'all understand that? Y'all like that? <laughs> huh? I mean, tails ain't the same as heads, but they equal. No matter what side you, 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 you know, you spend it on, you, it's still going to get a 25 cent value. No matter what side you get, you can get that. It's on the head. You, go, oh, you, yeah. you know what I mean? You still going to get the same value, 25 cents. It's a coin. They use coins to determine who get the ball first, right? Heads or tails, which one you want? Mercy or grace? See, God don't do us like that. His salvation is mercy and grace. Not just heads, it's tails too. It ain't not that much tails, but it's tails. You ain't gonna find too many verses linked with mercy and salvation, but it's in there. <laughs> just that me. Huh? The book of Hebrews says, let's read it. Hebrews chapter 4 and 16. And when you get there, just let them read. Hebrews chapter 4 and 16. Let us uh -huh, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Woo, come boldly to the what? And find what? Hey, it's like a combo. They're like twins. <laughs> They're like twins. You ain't getting grace without mercy. You ain't getting mercy without grace. They run together. You ain't getting me without Veronica. How dare you think you finna be a part of this family and exclude me? <laughs> oh, you think you finna be a part of my family and exclude my wife? Uh-uh. We run together. <laughs> Ain't no access to this family without, you know. <laughs> now my wife, I love her too. Now watch this. Remember I asked what's, what is grace in the definitions? Watch this. While grace is God giving us something we don't deserve. Ain't that what Derek said? Let me write it down. Grace is... Giving us something, what? What, Trey? What, Trey? See, if you had your notes, you better repeat it. Giving us something we don't deserve. Have you ever got something you, that, that you don't deserve? Have you ever did something and you know that help you got, you didn't deserve it? That's grace. <laughs> That's grace. What about you, Bonte? Yeah, by home, low grades, and your parents spurred you. They didn't get on your head. They say, man, get it together, Bonte. They done that for? That's grace. <laughs> Giving you something you don't deserve. Watch this. Mercy. Now we got to talk about mercy. Mercy is God withholding the punishment we deserve because of sin. Y'all got that? Grace is giving us something, right? This, this is giving us. Giving is a what? Is a what? Giving is a what? Action. Let me teach that. Grace is giving us something we don't deserve. Mercy is God withholding punishment we do 
deserve <laughs> because of sin. You got that? Yeah. Right. I got pulled over. Right. I deserve the ticket. But the officer showed mercy and said, I, I told him, I'm just trying to get to this, uh, this interview. No man of militia make it, but slow down. That was mercy. That was mercy. <laughs> I deserve the ticket. Absolutely. <laughs> that was mercy. He didn't he didn't receive anything. He just got, you know. Absolutely. See, what happened is when we look at grace, we want to think of grace and salvation. And that is true. Grace is salvational, but it don't just stop there. If you stop that, then you're not seeing God's true grace. The only way, matter of fact, the only way we can see grace is because of sin. God allowed this to go down so we can see his grace. Absolutely. Sometimes he don't step in the way intentionally. So when he come rescue you, you can say there ain't nothing but God. That's grace. <laughs> Sometimes he just let you sit in that jail. Or sit, you know, in that dope house. This one became a sermon. Let me get back to teaching. <laughs> <laughs> See, grace has a two-part definition biblically, all right? It's a two-part definition, all right? You have what's called common grace, and you got what's called salvational grace. It's two parts to grace. It's common grace and salvational grace. Time is, all right, wrapping on up. Two parts to it. Brittany, you like that, Brittany? <laughs> you have common grace and salvational grace. Well, we know what salvational grace is. Derek said that immediately. He was absolutely right. But my question to y'all is, what is common grace? That's the scripture. Because we're talking about grace in its entirety. And how it plays the role in salvation. Well, we, we pretty much know this is what we pretty much hear in church. But we don't know about no common grace. <laughs> Did y'all, oh, y'all aware that the scriptures talk about this? I wasn't aware either until, until I studied it. Common grace. Ain't no sense of playing. Let me teach. <laughs> common grace. Watch this. Y'all ever know what common grace is? Yep. It's God giving his sovereignty, his sovereignty grace to all mankind, regardless if they believe or not. Boy, he jumped a gun. Woo, this is a jump the gun class. Keep jumping, though. <laughs> Common grace has absolutely nothing to do with salvational grace. Common grace had everything to do with God showing you his sovereignty grace. <laughs> Who knows what sovereignty means? Y'all get your vocabulary up. Trey, what is sovereignty? Joshua, what is sovereignty? Brooke, figure it out. Figure it out. Google it. Sovereignty. What is sovereignty? This, this class. <laughs> bye bye. You okay? You okay, bye bye? <laughs> Say it again. Supreme power. Ain't nothing more powerful than the sovereignty of God. The, the the supreme power. Who gonna be the supreme power in your house? Physically. No, physically. That's right. And you run your house according to what God say. That little check you got, we're gonna hold on to that. It's all over you. 
Y'all see that? Common grace is God giving his sovereignty grace to all mankind regardless if they believe in him or not. Who disagree with that? I make truth. <laughs> it make truth. <laughs> you understand that? Oh, you heard Joshua said you're gonna have to back that up with scripture. <laughs> oh, I like that. Why do you think people walking around non Christians better than you are? That's God's grace. That's common grace. Absolutely. There are a lot of go ahead, Brunton. <laughs> there are a lot of unbelievers that are own. What you talking about? They own, and they more own than the ones that believe. <laughs> you understand me? But the only reason they own like that is because of God's grace. That's it. He let them know. Even if you don't believe in me, my grace is still sufficient. <laughs> That's called common grace. Huh? Man, why? Is they, they go out and do all that stuff, and, 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 and yet they get forgiven. And I got, I'm sitting here been, been working and, and, and doing all these things and been doing my best to do the right thing. <laughs> That's common grace. That's a, that's, that, that should make you even more happier. Dang God good. <laughs> but they, grace is temporary. Because if they don't believe in the DBR, like Ladera said, that salvational grace, that common grace, is going to be no more for them. <laughs> Y'all understand that? Joshua said, go some scriptures on it. Let me give you some common grace scriptures. The dirty jumped the gun on something, but I'm gonna give you some anyway. Matthew chapter 4, verse 45. A lot of people under common grace and think they own. You ain't own. It's God's grace that you own. Not no blessing. <laughs> huh? Matthew chapter 5, verses 45. And once he gets there, he can just read. You ain't got no notes, no nothing. You ain't gonna learn nothing. How you gonna learn with no nothing? Let's hear it. That ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and send the grain on the just and on the unjust. <laughs> Y'all like that? God causes the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. He causes the rain, make it rain on the good and the bad. Something like that, what it said. That's called common grace. Let's go to Psalms chapter 140, um, chapter 145 and verse 9. Psalms chapter 145 and verse 9. We're almost done too, y'all. Psalms chapter 145 and verse 9. When you get there, let's hear it. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are all over his works. The Lord is good to who? All. Not his, his, his believers only. To all. to all. Do everybody believe in God? Do, do everybody accept Christ? I could have sworn the scriptures say the road to heaven is narrow. And the road to hell is broad. This said his tender mercies. I'm trying to show y'all common grace. Brittany said grace is temporary. Grace is temporary only for the non-believers. Because <laughs> if they don't accept the salvational grace of God, his son, they're going to get it. Let's go to Luke chapter 6 and 35. I got to give you common grace. I got to give you Bible chapter and verse. Huh? Luke 
chapter 6 and 35. Man, I really appreciate y'all allowing me to do this. But love, Lee, but love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. You mean tell me God is kind to people that's unthankful and evil? And you mad? You got a short temper? You serious? <laughs> when God say he's what? He said he's kind to the unthankful and the evil. But you got a short temper. That's somebody told me that. Yesterday, mom, somebody told me I got a short temper. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what they told me. I don't know why they did. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> do y'all see this common grace? I ain't got to get no more scriptures on that, do No, you got it. That's common grace. Grace is more than salvational. Grace applies for everybody. And you'll see all these different things. You understand me? Huh? <laughs> then you got salvational grace. Y'all think that Derek said it was salvational grace? Y'all think he got it right? Y'all think I was gassing him up? What y'all think? Yeah, he got it right. I sure wanted to go back and forth, but he didn't allow me. <laughs> you got salvational grace, y'all. Salvational grace is grace from God that provides salvation to a person. That is totally different from treating people kind, you know, the evil and the, you know. <laughs> Oh, man. Let me write on the board. It's grace from God that provides salvation to what? To a person. That's what salvation of grace is. That's what it is. Let's go to the book. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of us of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Read it one more time. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Y'all see that salvational grace? Do that sound like the same thing as common grace? It does not sound, it sounds like the tail side of love, not the head side. <laughs> you look at that quarter. Y'all like that? Y'all think, think I came up with that? Y'all think I came up with that? Oh, yeah, oh, I, oh I, I read it from somewhere in the parking lot. What y'all think? Oh, you know, I got that from somebody. Don't sit here and talk like I ain't got that from nobody. <laughs> Justified, I got that from somebody. <laughs> I said, oh, I got to have that. <laughs> the verse is Ephesians chapter 2 and 8. So salvation of grace from God is, is grace from God that provides salvation to a person. How did God get how, how did God save us through grace by faith? Let me say it again. I studied it. How did God save us through grace by faith? By giving us the ability to confess Jesus our Lord. By giving us the ability to confess or maintain our righteous works. The Derek said on technicality one time, he said on technicality, that. It's only one thing. 
You think you think my bro don't know? My little bro? He know. Y'all know who my little brother is. Look, look to your left, you're gonna see him in the back. <laughs> <laughs> None of that stuff. It's what Ladera just said earlier. The death, burial, and resurrection. That part. That's salvational grace. I'm going to show it to you. How did God save us? Through grace by faith? By giving us his son, Jesus. Y'all agree with that? Yes. Okay, just don't agree with me. Just, just read it for yourself. Go to John chapter 3. Verses 16 through 18. John chapter 3, verse 16 through 18, and we have eight minutes left. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. <laughs> I read that as a speech one time. Believe. And what about him? What about him? See, God, see, God saved us through his son, right? The Jews had to believe in who he was. Everybody else in the world had to believe in what he did. We know who Jesus is. Now we got to believe in what he did. The Jews didn't have what he did. They had to believe in who he was, but they rejected and they killed that Messiah. All you Hebrew Israelites claiming to be Jews, your people rejected the Messiah. Now you're blinded. That's what the scriptures say. That's why you're walking around with aprons on. Now you're from the paint. <laughs> Looking like Raiden and Sub Zero. <laughs> but I'm gonna pull my joystick out on what's out one of y'all. Quick, hand me a PlayStation joystick. For what? Raiden out there and Sub Zero. <laughs> you see, the scriptures teaches, teaches us that grace is a gift from God, not alone. Do y'all understand that? Grace is a gift from God. I think uh, Snoopy said that earlier. Somebody said that earlier. Grace is a gift from God, not a loan. See, a loan, what's a loan? You got to pay it back. Loans require you to pay the creditor who paid the debt. So anytime you got to maintain or you got to do anything, you are now considered a gift no more. You considered a loan. I'm on the good. Until, you, know. <laughs> you know, I got to go to the scriptures. It's a gift. Romans 6 and 23. We got six minutes left. Romans 6 and 23. Let's hear it when you get there. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The gift of God. That word about the leaves. Which one? Right there. Right here? Nah, right there. This one? By last word. Or not. I like how you went and got your nose, boy. You understand me? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Look like his daddy, don't he? <laughs> <laughs> Ephesians 2 and 8. Let's read it again. So I got to show you that grace, salvation of grace, is a what, um, uh, Brooke? It's a gift. Let's hear it. For so by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. A gift. It's not no loan. He ain't loaning us salvation. So make sure we hold our part down. No, it's a gift. You don't let nobody tell you otherwise. Grace is a gift, and you owe nothing to the gift giver. If you give a gift to somebody, they don't owe you nothing back. You don't have no requirements to that gift. It's their gift. Ain't no stipulations to it, ain't no nothing. 
And watch this. And all gifts from the gift giver. Who's the gift giver? God. Are you in that, uh, Snoop? All gifts from the gift giver, which is from God, they are permanent. God don't take his gifts back. He ain't no Indian giver. Y'all might be too young to know what an Indian giver is. <laughs> Once he give you a gift, it's yours. When you give somebody something, you take it right back. That's a lot. It's called a loan. They ain't no gift, but that's right. If God give us a gift and take it back, God is a liar. So anytime somebody say you got to do something for this gift, they calling God a liar. Now I'll show you in proof in scripture. And the sister talking about it. Let's get to it. Because I got four minutes left. Romans chapter 11, verse 29. Let's read the New King James Version. Romans chapter 11, verse 29. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. What's, what's irrevocable? What? Wait, yes. Wait, I'm sorry. Romans chapter, Romans chapter 11, verse 29. Now let's read New King James Version. I like, I like to hear certain words. <laughs> CSB didn't give me the right the word I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear something strong. King James Version gave me the word I wanted to hear. I want to hear something hard. <laughs> Let's hear it again. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Sal is salvation a gift? Yes. Is God gifts? Can he renege on them? No. Scriptures say his gifts are irrevocable. What does that mean? Quick. Yeah, quick. Can't take it you can't take it back. Hey, let's not sleep on CSB. CSB says since God's gracious gifts and power are all irrevocable. <laughs> <laughs> salvation is a gift from God and it's irrevocable. You don't lose your salvation. This ain't no loan. When you truly say, you walk that walk. Someone truly saved and finna get out and do the same thing. They ain't saved. They pretenders, imposters. Bane. Trying to make people think they saved and they not. If you saved, you're going to stop doing everything you were doing. And if you're struggling with it, you're going to get out of that practice. That's true. You see, by God giving us his son, by his grace, and by, and by which we are saved, through faith, God's God grace is called the gospel. Y'all know that? We know what the gospel is, right? He ain't got to no read that. But for the sake of the people who ain't heard it, let's hear it again. Let's hear it. Let's hear the gospel. I had him on the shirt, so I had to share, share with CSA. I told him, uh, I was on, I was on uh, Zoom call with a famous YouTube yesterday. I had to pay for it, but he gave me a lot of knowledge for YouTube. And he started getting real spiritual. Yeah. Popping out scripts. So I'm loving your spiritual talk. Right? I said, let me share some of you. I want you to read this. Okay, the gospel. <laughs> Let it read. Give him the gospel. Let it read. <laughs> now I want to make clear. Oh, I'm on CSB. How you want? Give me King James. I gotta get used to this King James. <laughs> Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received, and where ye in wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Christ died for our Christ died for our sins. He was buried. What else? 
And he rose on third day according to the scriptures. That means that that had to be talked about in the Old Testament. <laughs> Ooh, I see y'all going to start to dispensate a little bit. I see y'all. So I, mean, I can go back in the, in the Old Testament and get the death, burial, and resurrection. <laughs> so that's the gospel, right? And I just said grace is the gospel because this was God's grace for us giving his son. That's what we just read in 316, right? So let's round it on up and, and close with this. Acts 20 and 24. Acts 20 and 24. It's good. I know y'all seeing this great stuff. And I ain't, I ain't even starting my timeline through Adam, Noah, Cain, Lot, etc. You know, this might be a 14-part series messing with me. <laughs> Let's hear it. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. The, testify the what? Gospel of the grace of God. What is the gospel of the grace of God? The death, burial, and resurrection. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Let me write it on this side. This is the gospel of grace. The gospel of grace. Y'all even know Grace had a gospel? <laughs> this is real. The gospel of grace. All right. We're going to stop there. I'm at my time. We're going to walk this thing down. We're going to walk this thing down. You're going to know what grace is in its entirety and how it plays a role in salvation. We ain't even got to the Old Testament grace yet. We finna have some fun. You all right, Mama? Yeah. <laughs> all right. We got questions? See, I know the Holy Spirit went to work when nobody got no questions. Because he worked. And I pray that it be him to teach. Cross-examine me. Don't take my word for none of this. Go on your scriptures on your own, in your book. Do not treat me like a, a, a bishop or a pastor. No, I'm telling you myself to cross-examine me. I might be wrong on something. The Spirit of God might drop something in you that I missed. We're a team. Irons sharpen. Ah. All right, viewers, y'all got questions? Share this video. What is Trame God mean? Triune God. Triune. Triune God is God, one God. It's only one God. It's not three gods. It's one God made up of three persons. That's what it is. Who the three persons? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's good. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Look at, look at it like this, Trey. Look at me. How many people you see right here? One. What if I tell you I'm made of three parts? Can you see them? What? Name them. Dead son. No, them titles. No, them titles. I'm a son of my mom. That's a title. I'm not saying I'm made up of three persons. Yeah, you do. Look at me. You ready? My body. Right? What else? What else, what else I got? What's that called? It's over the S. S O U. Soul. Right? And guess, guess what the third one is? Spirit. I'm made of my own body, my own soul, my own spirit. That's three in one. You got it now? Yeah, you said God is a father.
God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Not three gods. Don't let nobody tell you there's three gods. They had many gods back in the day. Ain't no such thing as three gods. You say, did somebody say there's three gods? Tell them that's blasphemy. Now, nah, hold on. Tell you capping. There it is. <laughs> Ain't no three gods. It's one God. They didn't call the sun God. The sun. Zeus. The sun God Zeus. No, the, the Egyptian. Oh, the Egyptian, yeah. Sun. They worship everything. <laughs> the sun, the moon, and the stars. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Hey, Miss Jolly. You jumped on. We get ready to leave, but you're right. Soul, spirit, and body. I'm made up of three parts, just like God, but I'm only one. My soul is not my spirit. Is my body my soul? No. Jesus is not the Father. But it's me. <laughs> All right, guys. Share this video. Tag a friend. Thanks for watching. Part two will be Monday at 7.30. No, Monday at 7 p.m. And we're going to continue this grace series. May the grace of God be with you and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.